on the topic expanding the horizons of ISTD. The world today is stuck in COVID-19 situation. Some say it is bad, few more say it has more. Uh, so brought our life to a pause. But today I promise we'll see how the situation has changed our thought process from the traditional one to a whole new method. COVID-19 has shown us the importance of online systems. Although it's way more used in Western countries than compared to India, but now we have understood that online systems can join us with the whole world, which was always taught in books, but never was used to its full capacity. After COVID-19 situation, suddenly we are through the looking glass. The horizons are turned around and a world envisioned only by futurists is playing out in real time on data terminals, social network feeds, and television screens. Today's webinar is on the topic, expanding the horizons of ISTD. A very relevant topic, and that is also the need of the hour. Everyone, whether they were using online methods or not, are struggling and developing their strengths by learning each day. How am I saying that it is the right time for us to expand the horizons of ISTD? Because we will also be at the starting of the learning curve. What might be particularly challenging in this time is to effectively build and support an effective portfolio of initiatives, which, which might both be uh, maturing very fast than the normal times and be harder to predict due to rapidly changing regulator environment. Today, we all are here to discuss on the opportunities prevailing in the current environment that will help ISTD to expand its horizons. I won't discuss much on the topic as we have expert panelists and experienced members of ISTD who will be elaborating on this topic itself for the attendees. So before moving ahead, I would like to welcome the moderator, Dr. Rajan Saxena, as well as the expert panelist, Dr. Suresh Vishwakarma from Canada, Dr. Samir Rohadia from Germany, Dr. Uh, Mr. Yash, Yash Chavla from Poland, Ms. Anuradha Pace from Maryland, USA. Before moving ahead, I would request Mr. Kurian Daniel to explain the theme of the webinar to the attendees. Please, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. As we have panelists as well as participants from the whole world. Friends, even though ISCD has completed 50 years, we have to still thinking of expanding our horizon. Few of our ISCD members who has established in different parts of the world Specifically, Dr. Suresh Vishwarma, who is the member of ISTD Jabalpur, now attached to ISTD Bhopal, was after me because he was seeing all our uh, webinar series, which we have already done, five series we have already done regarding ISTD yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and one ISTD tomorrow, and uh, one uh, learning through ISTD. This is the sixth one. So he was asking me, why can't we think of doing something abroad, outside India? Now our policies and rules and regulation only pertaining to our chapters in India. So I also thought this is the right time because we are coming for election and the new committee will take up by November. So we will be just starting the discussions, keeping the ball rolling. So that with the ideas of not only today's panel, but the persons who is attending today with their brainstorming, we can conclude some decisions which can be transforming ISTD. Not wasting much time. Today our uh, webinar was supposed to be inaugurated by Dr. Nataraj Ray. With the preoccupation, he will be joining us late. On behalf of him, I declare this webinar inaugurated. Over to Dr. Shelja. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's the time to uh, introduce our panel members as well as the moderator of the webinar to the attendees. So I would request uh, uh, Mr. Gurinder to uh, start the presentation. OK. Uh...
Give me a moment. I'm just going to switch the screens. Thank you, sir. So we'll start with the introduction of the uh, lady first, as they say, ladies first. So I would introduce uh, Mr. Nurada Pace uh, from Maryland, USA first. So can you please go on the slide of uh, the introduction of Mr. Nurada Pace, please? Okay, so Can you see uh, the slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, everyone. Uh, Ms. Anuradha has a degree in MB, MA, MBA Design Leadership, MSc Psychology, and also she holds a diploma from ISTD. Ms. Anuradha designs transformational programs and projects that explore the golden triangle of human centered design strategy and business founded on extensive research, collaboration, and co creation. As a strategist and collaborated, collaborator inherently and a psychologist and designer by education, Ms. Anuradha enjoys simplifying complex business problems by observing and studying people, practices, and processes to identify connections, disruptions, and patterns. Ms. Anuradha loves to create meaningful people or user experiences and significant business impact. She also coaches, lenders, and mentors team. Her hobbies are art, dance, and yoga. Looking at her profile, I expect that she'll be adding some uh, innovative and creative ideas to the discussion on how to expand the horizons of ISCD. Further, I would like to introduce Mr. Yash Chavla to the attendees. Can you go on that slide, sir? Next slide. Uh, Mr. Yash Chavla is a researcher, academician, trainer, and consultant, currently working as Fox Flow University of Science and Technology, Poland. He is currently pursuing PhD in Management Science, and a post, uh, he holds a degree in post, uh, sorry, MTech, MBA, BTech, and BCA. Uh, he has nine years of academic experience, eight years of training and consultant experience, and three years of research experience. His areas of specialization are management science, learning and development through use of social media, sustainable development and design thinking. His hobbies are traveling, painting, public speaking, and storytelling, as well as blogging. Again, looking at uh, Mr. Yash Chavla's profile, we can expect that uh, uh, the use of social media, as well as uh, the uh, connectivity uh, through uh, online modules, uh, he'll be explaining or he'll be highlighting on uh, during his uh, speech or during his discussion. The next uh, is uh, Mr. Dr. Samir Roharia. He is uh, he did his B Electrical and MBA IT from MS University of Baroda. He's a doctorate in ERP management from Gujarat Technological University, Ahmedabad. Masters in Data Science from Bologna Business School, University of Bologna, Italy. He has 20 years of corporate and business management teaching experience in reputed institutes and universities in Gujarat. Currently, an IT trainer and data analyst in Hanover, Germany, conducted various sessions of German, Polish, and Slovenian students as part of faculty exchange programs since 2010. He has published more than 15 research papers in reputed journals and has visited 15 European countries to date. He has received five awards for teaching excellence from Institute of Repute. He is also a life member of ISTD and also life member of Baroda Management Association. Next slide, please. Further, I would introduce Dr. Suresh Vishwakarma, uh, who is an energy sector professional with more than 32 years of experience in public utility companies in Canada. Seychelles and India. He holds a degree in electrical engineering, MBA and PhD, 
uh, in assessment of frontline managers in powerful uh, power distribution companies. Dr. Suresh is currently working as a senior engineer for an engineering consulting company in Vancouver, Canada. His areas ex of expertise include power distribution, network development, system efficiency, to name a few. He had conducted training needs assessment at PUC stations and also has prepared the training plan and training policy for his company. Dr. Suresh is a licensed professional engineer in British Columbia province of Canada and a registered chartered engineer with the Engineering Council of UK. Dr. Suresh is a life member of ISTD since last 25 years and prior to leaving India in 2000, he was a very active member of ISTD Jabalpur chapter. Last but not the least, I would like to introduce Dr. Rajan Saxena, who is also the moderator of uh, uh, today's webinar. He's a graduate uh, and postgraduate in commerce from Sri Ram College of Commerce, University of Delhi, and a PhD from the Delhi School of Economics. Dr. Saxena started his career in academics in 1972 at Delhi University as a lecturer. He held the position of director IIM in Law, IBS Gurgaon, and SD10 Institute of Management Studies and Research Mumbai, and vice chancellor of Narsimunji Institute of Management Studies, Deemed University, Mumbai, from 2009 to 2020. Uh, he also has taught as visiting professor at IIM Kolkata, University of Calgary, Canada, and Pace University, New York. He has leadership, he has held leadership position at IMR CME, where he chaired its board of study, the, studies and also conceived Indian Case Research Center on the lines of Asian Case Research Center. Today, he chairs its board also. He has been leading Higher Education Committee of SICKI since, uh, since 2010 as its co-chair, chair and advisor. He also leads management education with South Asia through board position in AMDISA, a SARC regional management school network. Earlier, he has been a board member of Association of Indian Management School and AICT Board of Studies in Management Education. He was invited as a speaker at AACSB, that is Association to Advance Collegiate School of Business International, EFMD, European Federation of Management Development, GMAC, College Board, FICI, AMDISA, and IMA conferences in India and Asia. Has received several awards of repute, such as BMA's Best Teacher of Management Award, Best Marketing Teacher at International Brand Summit, PT Visionary Leader, Higher Education Forum's Life Achievement Award in Management Education, Rotary Club's Vocational Excellence Award in Higher Education, to name a few. Words are less and time is short to introduce such personality, but I have tried my best to cover most of their achievements. Hope everyone is eager to hear from the experts. First, I request Dr. Rajan Saxena to open the uh, open the discussion. Over to you, sir. Thank you. So your mic is new. Yeah. Thank you. Mic is Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shanda, for for introducing all of us uh, to this webinar. And uh, let me extend a very hearty welcome to all my fellow panelists and also all the participants who are also the fellow members, who are also my, or, or let's say, I would say fraternal members in ISTD. Uh, many of them have been, uh, I've known them from an earlier time period also. And it is always good to see many of them today joining in. And so therefore, a hearty welcome to each one of you. I would also like to take this opportunity of thanking Mr. Korean uh, for putting together such a kind of a wonderful panel with whom I had an opportunity to interact just a couple of days back on what it is that we can really do when we talk about a subject like expanding the horizons of ICT. Uh, it's indeed very, very innovative. It's indeed very, very take thoughtful of you, Mr. Korean. Thank of, you. Of putting together such a kind of a, of a, of a webinar bringing together people from different parts of the world, which is, which is indeed a very, very interesting kind of a proposition. We have uh, participants today from Europe and also from, from the US and Canada. So the Americas are present over there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ISCD, as we all know, uh, we, have, we have all been part of ISCD, and, and I've been one of those who became the member of ISCD back in 1983. 
uh, if, I may, if, if, I, if I remember very correctly, I became the member in 1983 and uh, subsequently became uh, not only the, uh, I was the, uh, the secretary of the Bombay chapter and, and later the chairman of the Bombay chapter, went over to become the vice president of the Western region and then the president of ICB back in ni early 1990s itself. And, uh, and, and uh, somewhere in the middle of 1990s, ICB decided to confer on me the fellowship of ICB. So I will be very grateful for to ICD and the ICD has played a very, very significant role in my understanding of the treaty function. Having said that, it's been almost about it's been 50 years ago that ICD really came in and uh, and over the 50 years, possibly has trained many, many uh, people all over this all over India. We have had we have had some wonderful conferences, we have had some great presidents in the in the society. Our, our relationship with IFTDO, the International Federation of Training and Development Organization, has really got us to organize the IFTDO conferences even in India. And, uh, and many of us have had the opportunity to address that, those, 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 those conferences, not only in India, but even outside the country itself. So with that having said that, let me, let me put it across like that, that you know, all organizations, all living organizations need to continuously renew themselves. And especially when we are talking about a 50 year journey of, of a body like ISPD, it is certainly the time for all of us to renew, to look at what more can ISPD do? What more can we do for ISPD as individuals, what is it that we can do for ICD? And as an organization, where should the organization really go forward? I do realize, and, if, and I'm sure that you would all, all, all understand and, and all appreciate, that one constant in our lives is, is change. And perhaps, as very rightly said by Shalja, uh, just a few minutes back, Dr. Shalja talked about it, that you know, about the pandemic, but I'm look, I look at this pandemic today as a, a, as a disruptive change in our lives. And it's a like a black swan event that has occurred. You know, and once a black swan event occurs, because a black swan event is where you do not know when it would occur, you do not, you, there, there's nothing before, and there's perhaps nothing after. You do not know, therefore. And you are also not aware of the fact that how long this is going to be. So this pandemic today has really brought to forward the significance of change in our lives and the intelligence of coping with this kind of a change. How do we respond to this kind of a change? Whether this has been the digitalization of the business, for example, or the digitalization of the learning processes that we talk about. Or it is, for example, like say the collaboration at the global level, not just merely and the, in the area of learning or business, but even in research, for example. And therefore, from all this kind of a perspective, I believe that, you know, today the day where change is, change is a reality. Change is a constant. It is, it is a reality in our lives. The other part of, it, of this is also that this change is not that it's something out of the blue. Certainly, pandemic is out of the blue, but the change was already occurring in the, in the world. We were already talking about Industry 4.0. We were talking about where, you know, the technology has come to the center stage. And technology is continuing to and, and will play a determining role in our lives. Where data is going to become so significant. So when I look at it, the World Economic Forum in January and February of 2020, while discussing the various dimensions of the change and also looking at how the jobs were changing, 
and how the skills were evolving, came to the conclusion that almost one fifth, one billion people in this world will require a better education still to really cope with the change that is occurring by 2030. That means, in other words, the task ahead is that of training, the task ahead is that of educating one billion people and skilling those kinds of people. And criticality that, that comes up over here is that, unfortunately, many of these universities, especially when I talk about it in the Indian context, and even internationally that I know of, and many of the training institutions, perhaps having a dead focus on this whole dimension and this whole agenda of skilling, reskilling, and upskilling. The World Economic Forum created a platform called as a reskilling revolution platform, on which there are almost about seven founding countries, and India is one of them. And there are companies like Coursera, Salesforce, LinkedIn, and others who are also the corporate partners of this whole exercise. How can ISP be really taken advantage of that? That's one part. Second is, technology today makes geography redundant. And if technology has made geography redundant, then obviously the, the question that comes up is, how can ISPD really reach out to the world market, to its members spread across the, across the world, and be of service, not only to its members, but also create what I call it as the value added from products for those geographies and that can then make ICD a more vibrant economy. Their body is Ladies and gentlemen, the panel that we have drawn today is indeed a very, very interesting panel, one that has some great ideas, one who has a lot of thoughts in this. And as I was looking at from the perspective of uh, and, and, and the discussion that was happening around in the in the group, people have a lot of thoughts on what ICD should be doing. And I think we need to focus on what they are talking about it. And each chapter can then initiate a lot of such kind of a dialogue, not only at the chapter level with their own members, but also look at it, what else each chapter can do, and also what the national body can really do, whether this is in terms of a diploma program, or it is in terms of the certificate programs, or then going forward in terms of creating a, a degree program in partnership with one of the foreign universities itself or an Indian university. So having said that, let me stop over here and let me start by asking each of our panelists members to really uh, make a presentation. Each one of them would take about, about another 10 minutes time period to make a presentation. They are going to introduce themselves since the introduction has already happened. Maybe that we can set it out and we will request each one of them to really start it off. Maybe we'll start with uh, Dr. Sabir, followed by Ms. Mrs. Yash Chavla, Dr. Anuradha, and if by that time period, Dr. Suresh has joined, we bring in Dr. Suresh. Dr. Sameer? Dr. Suresh is there, no? No. He's there? Yes, sir, he's there, he's there. I think so we can start with Dr. Suresh. Yeah, I, Dr. Uh, Suresh, yeah. are you there? I can't see you. No, no, I'm very much here. Oh, wow. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Canada? Yeah, Let's yeah. hear from Canada. Let's hear from Vancouver. Uh, can everybody yeah. see me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, 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 Suresh. Yeah. All right. So, hello, everyone. And warm greetings from Vancouver, Canada. A very good evening to all attendees in India and a very good afternoon for the panelists sitting in Europe. I believe somebody is from Poland and somebody is from Germany. Dr. Nataraj Jai, National President of ISTD, I wish he was here. Mr. Korean Daniel, the Regional Vice President of Western Region. 
डॉक्टर शैलजा भाकर सेक्रेटरी ऑफ आई एस टी डीज ग्वालियर चैप्टर एंड ऑल द पैनलिस्ट ऑन दिस वर्चुअल डायस स्पेशल थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर शैलजा फॉर द नाइस इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑल द पैनलिस्ट इट इज इंडीड ए ग्रेट प्लेजर फॉर मी टू गेट दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू शेयर माई थॉट्स टूडे ऑन एक्सपेंडिंग द हॉरिजन ऑफ आई एस टी डी बियॉन्ड इंडिया एंड अटेम्प्टिंग टू ऑपरेट आई एस टी डी ग्लोबली लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एस टी डी हैज बीन ऑपरेटिंग वेरी ब्यूटिफुली फॉर पास टू सो मेनी ईयर्स इन इंडिया रीचिंग आउट टू इंडस्ट्रीज एकेडमिया ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर्स एज वेल एज अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर्स आई एम एसोसिएटेड आई एम प्राउडली एसोसिएटेड विद आई एस टी डी सिंस नाइनटीन नाइनटी फाइव and as dr rajan has said just now that it is now high time to start thinking about touching new heights reaching new heights i understand that istd has got more than 8000 live members as on today's date who, who all are spread all over india as well as overseas i know that we have got as many as 50 active chapters in india and uh, let us see if we are able to add few more chapters in the forthcoming years so it will not be unjust to say that a strong membership base is the actual strength of istd and now as dr rajan has said that it is high time for us to expand our horizon and expand our network so if we are planning to expand istd's horizon globally beyond india there is definitely a need to explore the possibilities of involving and gaining contribution of istd members especially working in foreign countries to the extent possible members are our two ambassadors my friends they are the one who can publicize istd most effectively and efficiently through the word of mouth i know publicity <coughs> plays a very role and you all agree with me <coughs> my dear friends in my opinion the first step in this direction would be to extract the information of members working overseas from our membership database i believe that istd headquarters has got its <coughs> a dot a good database of all its member and recently i believe that there was some exchange of emails to all the members to have their email ids updated to have they have their cell phone number updated so that is if that will be a very good channel <coughs> and i agree that it may be true that the current database may not be having the updated information of istd members definitely <coughs> within india as well as overseas also recently during my conversation with mr kurian i got an indication that the info database is probably not as updated as it should have been and especially for the members working overseas but we can always put our efforts through other online platforms including linkedin facebook and others where professionals they generally mention their credentials and affiliations to various professional bodies even if you go to linkedin and just write in the search column istd or mistd probably you will get a long list of members and out of that you can always search out that who all are based overseas <clears throat> you know this complete information istd may not get in one go but definitely a kick start is mandatory and you know i had mentioned the same thoughts to miss shobha secretary of istd bangalore chapter during one of the recent istd webinars organized on july 15th by virtual mode so i was glad to note that shobha had appreci appreciated in fact and encouraged my ideas before the national president and others in the istd's leadership team and as uh, mr kurian has mentioned in his address that i have been continuously often i have been talking to kurian about expanding istd's activity globally and if possible to start a virtual international chapter so in this process in i believe that the second step should be to start a virtual international chapter at the initial stage and that international chapter should include all ist members who are currently based in foreign countries like me like anuradha like shamir and like the other gentlemen we have on our yash we have 
on the list of panelists. Ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Rajan has said, as Dr. Shalja has said, that yes, Corona has brought a lot of bad in our life. That is for sure. Lot of things which should have been happening, they are not happening now. But, you know, there is always a positive side of everything. <sighs> you know, it has now taught us how to keep going using the technologies even while we, while we are staying far. And the classic example is, see, today somebody is sitting in Poland, somebody is sitting in Germany, somebody is sitting in uh, US, somebody myself sitting in Vancouver. And, you know, we all are sharing our thoughts at the common platform. You know, all these things, they were not that much active and, you know, they, they were very, very limited prior to the Corona situation. Yes, there is pandemic and we have to fight the situation. And yes, we are bridging the situation. We are doing our best. A lot of work and schooling is now operating virtually using computers and cell phones. Not only work and education. You know, there are a lot of other things which have now gone up. Maybe the example of e-commerce. The this sector has grown up like anything. The online shopping, it used it is, it is currently the on shy, online shopping it has gone to that extent that it was never ever to that extent in the past this e-commerce activities maybe it is amazon or other online grocery grocery shops ocardo a lot of things even in canada we are buying most of the stuff online so you know so there there is always a situation where we can explore the possibilities and we can definitely innovate ideas that how we can use this opportunity, this situation as a lesson to go forward. You can see the example of pharmaceutical industry, logistic industry, video conferencing industry like the Zoom. Zoom was never ever active as it is active now. <clears throat> and if we <clears throat> look into the kids side, this entertainment, streaming and the gaming industry that has also come up. So there are always opportunity and you know, every this opportunity gives us something to learn. So why not I study also exploit the situation, explore the possibilities? My friends, in order to reinforce activities for the ILC, ISTD also needs to encourage the participation of now overseas member whenever possible through <clears throat> virtual mode or through their personal visits to India. I know that their personal participation will happen only when the tra travel restrictions are lifted and the lockdowns are over. But, you know, remember, good things take time to happen. But sincere and targeted efforts at times bring the results very quickly also. So I think we should take a lesson from it. And, you know, we should start thinking about starting a virtual ISTD chapter with the members who are already based in foreign countries. <clears throat> Once we have identified a good number of members in different regions, maybe that our single international virtual chapter that can be further divided into regional international chapters and you know these initiatives they will definitely take time but as i said that good things take time to happen but definitely they will happen and finally suppose any situation we are able to get <clears throat> the 50 members in any particular country which i believe is a mandatory requirement to start any chapter within india Maybe we can start a physical chapter in a foreign country and that will definitely be something, <clears throat> something, you know, that can go, that can be an exemplary situation where <clears throat> the other uh, regions, other countries, maybe <clears throat> we can look in, we, we, uh, there will be possibilities to have more international chapters in foreign countries. As I said, that good things take time to happen but sincere and targeted efforts at times bring the results quickly also. So let us make the ball rolling. Let us start thinking about it. Thank My you. friends. Thank you. More time, Korean? Just wanted to share something more also. Okay, go ahead. All right, okay. I also want to explore the possibilities of collaborating with few leading foreign universities and institutions to, get, to gain international accreditation to ISTD as well as our diploma program, which is currently on offer. You know, gaining international recognition will not only upgrade the status of ISTD diploma, 
but it will also attract participation of national as well as international registrants not only that it is high time to join hands with few leading international universities and professional bodies to run joint programs with them here i would like to mention that engineers canada which is the leading professional body in fact that uh, all the provincial regulatory bodies of engineer they operate under the umbrella of engineers canada <clears throat> they have developed several programs with polytechnic montreal on sustainability and other issues of global interest and they allow participants from all over the world most of their courses are offered online and anyone interested can enroll for their programs while sitting in his or her base country you will appreciate that even i have successfully completed one of their four weeks online program during this online uh, ongoing corona situation <clears throat> and i remember all india management institution all india management association in india they were also offering a doctoral program in year 2004 jointly with aligarh muslim university for the working professional even institution of engineers india i am a life member of that institution they have also collaborated with few universities and offering post graduate programs through distance come regular mode niti mumbai which is now known as n i i e that has also now for high time for iscd also to develop a strategy to go forward in as many functions as possible so iscd must also target to offer more programs in learning and development and elevate its status to a leading institution providing support to industries entrepreneurs and unorganized thank you thank you sir thank you very uh, much i come back, back to you, you again. with many many questions you have many issues and i'm going to come back to you Thank you. Let me just go down. Uh, yes, Dr. Sameer. Yes, sir. So, thank you very much uh, for <clears throat> giving me an opportunity to uh, interact with all the panelists, plus as well as our respected all the participants who are definitely uh, part of uh, one or other ISTD chapter. And uh, my association with ISTD is, I think, so since uh, since uh, 2014, and uh, uh me and yash we are associated we were associated or we are still associated with the istd vadodara chapter and we are proud of it and uh, yeah so uh i also was uh, for short period i was also the secretary of uh, istd vadodara chapter and then i moved to italy and then now in germany so uh, when i got a message from uh, uh, Mr. Kurian, that uh, this kind of webinar is going to take place, so are you interested? I immediately said yes because this this uh, important. So it was uh, so it is my pleasure to be part of this webinar. Now uh, related to the German market, yeah. If I talk about the training uh, in Germany, definitely Germany is well known for the dual education system, yeah. Uh, most of you must be knowing so here the uh, i would say the students who are there uh, even if they are in school or even if they are in university uh, there this training uh, part or i would say the practical part is very very important over here so they the students they spend their uh, time in their own university or school and side by side they also spend their time with some of the vocational schools so vocational schools plus they also go to the companies and in companies also they take a lot of practical training so here i would say that in germany overall there is a very good market of uh, training and development yeah and uh, uh, there are many companies uh, or, or especially the bigger companies they have their own training academy but still they also require the support of the external trainers in that case so uh i would say that when i see istd and the german market i think so it is really promising area over here so definitely we should explore this thing and as uh, dr suresh said that uh, uh, let us first of all start by creating a virtual uh, group over here yeah so we can have an international group where any uh, like those who are outside india they can become part of the, uh, or, or they can become member of this group and then we can try to 
segregate into small small groups because first of all like i and uh, yes we know each other uh, since we were in vadodara yeah? then now now i am knowing uh, dr suresh also plus if someone is coming say for example in germany i may not have any idea or that person may not have idea that okay i am already over here so let us try to create this thing uh, to create a forum and if we another thing if we want to expand uh, this immediately this isdt networks then i would say that uh, uh, so we go with this virtual one plus we should target those companies those especially I, i'm i'm talking from the germany point of view that we should target the german companies who are already established in india they are having their own network over there their offices and uh, try to get connected with them because it happens that if some if some german is coming from here to india uh, definitely he or she will be interested in knowing that what is the culture part and how the people are reacting and those kind of soft skills also and plus uh, how is the overall uh, indian business scenario definitely you get all this information on google also but then you require very very minute details also so there istd can pitch in and they can try to connect with this uh, uh, say german organizations or canadian organizations or polish also and then uh, once you are uh, i would say uh, famous in that particular circle then through those uh, companies you can definitely we can contact over here their local offices in germany and then we can include them yeah so because uh, i i have seen especially that uh, german culture uh, they don't open up immediately they try to see the things uh, in very detailed manner yeah so even if i go and if i say that okay i'm coming from istd and this is my proposal definitely they will not accept this thing okay and uh, they take a lot of time because earlier i was also involved with the international relations between the indian university and the G german universities so i know it took almost around 2 years to convince those uh, german universities yeah so it takes time but once we uh, for uh, us it is and uh, it is important that we are already having the german companies in india so let us contact them and then let us be in that circle and and through them only we will get reference over here in the in germany or canada or us or poland yeah so i think so that this can be an another important step to establish ourselves yeah uh, or to sell istd uh, to this uh, uh, i would say the foreign countries so uh, this is one thing and overall like just i would like to give you a brief idea that how training is important over here like my daughter she is studying in ninth grade and in ninth grade she was told that she has to do compulsory two weeks training she can go to any shop she can go to any 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 company but the, and this is i'm talking about ninth grade student yeah uh, not a university student so that's why this training and this vocational thing is very very important over here and uh, even i also was uh, was a uh, was uh, uh, an an intern uh, in in one of the company that is continental and i worked for 6 months and i know that these companies uh, german company they don't take you just like an intern okay they they treat you like a permanent employee and they get the work done and you also learn a lot many things so training is very serious business over here especially i know about germany so uh, i would say that there is a huge market over here even though there are established players also but uh, we can definitely tap this market uh, but we have to go step by step yeah one uh, uh, I, i would say the method which has been already given by dr suresh that let us create a group let us try to connect ourselves those who are in this uh, other countries and then we also try to simultaneously connect with the uh, 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 so with the mncs who are there in india and then through them we try to spread out in the other countries so this is what i wanted to share my point of view yeah dr rajan thank you thank you dr sanu thank you very much uh, let me let me bring uh... Uh, at this point of time, I will send from send from America, uh, Doctor Anuradha Face, and then come to Jack. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I'm still yet to be a doctor. I'm right now. Uh, can you be a little loud? Can you be a little loud? Your voice is yeah. very, very feeble. Uh, 
Sure. Is this better? Yep, it's, it's okay. certainly better. Sure. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, well, I'm not a doctor yet, and uh, I would say an aspiring doctor. I am pursuing my research, and I'm just three papers in process as compared to the esteemed panelists here. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I think iStudy doing this phenomenal job and it's taken its first step to expanding its horizon by bringing all of us here and having this conversation. The second thing that I feel strongly, uh, which is slightly different from my peers who mentioned earlier, is tying up with in universities. I think iStudy is a vocational training institute and it should position itself very strongly there. Instead of collaborating with universities, I would rather recommend iStudy collaborates with Indian universities or position itself as accredited or deemed university who provides vocational training. And I see that there can be a three-pronged approach to grow globally. Uh, one is, as uh, Dr. Uh, Sharad just mentioned about different companies who have their presence in India, is providing enterprise membership to the companies, which helps us expand our network and also connect with them to provide one is support their academies that they have through specific trainings, uh, also skilling their teams or team members with various programs. I understand ISTD has only one program right now, which is Diploma in Training and Development. And training and development is really a vast industry itself. So whether you talk about e-learning or online classes, synchronous, asynchronous session, uh, sessions in virtual training with COVID, it has become a different industry itself. So that brings in more opportunities to drive different certificate programs, which can help people skill and how we can really leverage the talent that we have and create new opportunities. And creating new opportunities is something that I was thinking, which when I moved to US has helped me a lot is volunteering. Uh, because of these are restrictions, you don't really have much to do. So how do you really ensure that you keep building your skills? And for me, that was helpful through Society of Industrial Organizational Psychology. And I won't say it's equivalent to ATD because they do a lot more in research and academia. And also it's a quite different body. But Having this volunteering base gave me opportunity to connect with uh, industry leaders, uh, network well, also build skills and work on papers and various initiatives. So I think that is the second element that I would want to bring up is how we can create a networking opportunity for people who are just beyond training, who are considering training as uh, a career, or maybe just interested in training because it's part of the company and they find it fascinating. Uh, the third one I think is the academic tie up. Uh, what I have seen here in US that every specialized program has a specific certification and every state has it. Uh, we don't have that in India and I don't think that we should have it because it gives you more opportunity to work across different uh, industry sectors and even regions. But what it did, uh, promote is having different skills development, whether it is coaching or instructional design, uh, designing virtual training, uh, adult learning as simple as andragogy, which is also one of the part which is taught in iStudy. But I think this can be a specific training or certification which can be offered separately, uh, including new uh, certifications like change management, uh, consulting skills, uh, leadership development, of course, which I understand are programs which iStudy conducts for various organizations who reach us, but it is not offered as certification for skill development. Uh, the other piece of information that I was thinking was more uh, like Dr. I'm forgetting the name, Suresh mentioned, uh, that was tie-ups or joint programs with various uh, organizations that are already available in various regions. So collaborating with ATD or SIOPs equivalent in all regions and partnering with them through conferences or various events that they host. So it creates opportunity for ISTD members who are present globally to be part of this and at the same time 
impanel ISTD's presence uh, and talent across different regions. And that's, these are my short thoughts. And I'll be happy to speak in particular if you have anything in specific. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anada. Uh, we are going to get back to you uh, soon. Yes. Yes. Uh, over, over to you. We look forward to hearing from you. Yes. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be among uh, such esteemed uh, panelists as well as esteemed members uh, of ISTD. Uh, as uh, Dr. Rohadia was mentioning that I've been a member uh, also around the same time when he started. And uh, now looking at the Indian context, and I've traveled to about 20 countries. So looking at the context for learning and development in those countries, one of the major things that pops up is, you know, everything looks nice. We want to do virtual chapters. Of course, we should do these things. But like we talk about virtual chapters, we talk about affiliations, we talk about a lot of things of expanding. But the, the main question that arises is why? First of all, the position that we are in right now, is it consolidated, the first question? The second question is that when we are wanting to expand, we are talking about various stuff. Do we have the value to offer? And what value do we have to offer? So that others are actually interested in joining the expansion. A very simple, uh, very simple example. Okay, we want to start a virtual chapter. It's a very good idea and it should definitely be done because that is the first step towards expanding the horizon uh, outside India. Now, the, say, for example, 100 members join in. The 100 members will have one meeting, two meeting, and then what? So here, I think we should, what we should do is we should follow something uh, that, uh, that is followed in product development. And it is very important to analyze what's going on. It's like empathize with what we have currently. It's a, and it's a process of design thinking that most of the top companies that they, they follow. And I, I've been training on one of them. So when I was hearing all the thoughts today, that is, that is what I, I was going to come, uh, speak about a completely different thing. But when the, uh, so many thoughts came up, so many ideas came up. So this is the thing that popped up in my head that we are having a lot of ideas. Now it's when we are talking about the execution of it, we need to, analyze what we have right now and analyze what we can offer. When we have these two things concretely available, only then we can actually say what we, what we can do further. Because again, we create a virtual group. We have hundred members in that from different countries. They will join for one meeting, two meetings, first meeting, hundred people join, second meeting, 80 people join, third meeting, 20 people join. And then it will be a challenge for then for, you know, people who are there in the group to come because maybe they don't find any value there. People who find value will join. So if we have these deliverables with us, then it will be easy to pitch it. Even instead of getting 100 members, we might get 500 members. So I think the first step is to create these deliverables of what we can offer in terms of expanding beyond India. Uh, in, in the discussion prior to the webinar, we were talking about uh, some things. And one of the things in my humble opinion that we can offer is that businesses are looking to penetrate Indian market. And now with the, with this all things going on with China, India, so we have a lot of scope of what our experienced members can share with the world. We have people from the industry, we have people from the academia, ISTD is rich in the member base, which has like, we have people who are experienced with say 50 years of experience, just working in the field to somebody who is just joining in. So we are very rich with diverse experience in diverse fields. We are not limited to say institution of engineers might have only engineering professionals or say uh, in Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication engineers might have only one, uh, one field of people. We have diverse field of people. I think we have to utilize this. It was really nice to see that ISCD was updating his database and there were talks uh, uh, back in 2016, 2017, when I was a national council member from uh, the Vododra chapter before I came to Poland. And there were a lot of talks going on that, okay, we will use this database. We will create a painter's database. We will, we will uh, create like training programs. We will launch programs. But I, I, I don't see anything of that being executed. I, I know that the database was updated for sure. So it's not just about getting the data again. You know, once you have the data, what are you going to do with the data? I think currently ISTD might have the members data updated from within India. The question is, what is ISTD doing with it? 
Are we sending any emails? I get, I still get emails from ISD, but the only emails that I get are the election emails, or I get some, uh, you know, some kind of newsletters of what has happened. But what can I do in it? I, I being here, I cannot do anything. This was the first instance where when, uh, Mr. Daniel contacted me, and now we are able to share something. So such kind of initiatives are very important where we get into a dialogue. Um, moving on from that part, once we have something that we can say, say we have this value that we can add uh, for this country or say only for the South Asian region or, or, or whichever part we talk about. So it's very important to build this. And for doing this, I think each and every chapter has a role to play. There is an organization called Isaac. I, I, I'm sure most of you must have heard about it. It's a youth organization run by people who are below 26. And it has, it has like, you can talk about, you can pick a country anywhere in the world and you will find the Isaac chapter there. One of the things that they did was they first created a, such a really wonderful framework. And that framework was about connecting the chapters together from different countries. So say in India, we have so many different chapters. And there are Western conference, there is uh, regional conferences, then there is a national conference. Apart from that, are we doing something to connect these chapters? That is again, something that we need to think because this internal mechanism, if we need to go international, first of all, we need to strengthen this network so that the information or the exchange of information or personnel between these chapters is strong enough. Because if you don't, if, you, if we cannot create a bond within the country where we have say, we do have cultural diversity, but we do have uh, like similar kind of uh, tendency. We have similar, uh, you know, political or it's a little bit different, but compared to other countries, it would be quite, quite similar. Even the expectations of the job market might be similar, but as compared to what we might think about say India and Germany or India and Poland or India and the U S. So uh, the second thing that I feel is we have to build a strong synergy within the chapters, which has to be the first point in expanding the horizon to, uh, towards going international. Now, uh, so again, first point about uh, getting value that we can give to others within India and abroad. The second, building synergies within the chapters itself. And I think the third most important is what uh, Ms. Uh, Faze also mentioned regarding positioning. I am, me being a member since four or five years, I am not sure what ISCD wants to do, frankly speaking. We are talking about diploma program. I was going through the diploma program of the syllabus of the diploma program. Now that is so generic as a person who wants to apply for a diploma program. If I go through that diploma program and I look an online course, I can go through like 20, 30, 50 different people talking about the same topic on YouTube. And they are renowned people. They are not like people who are uh, not having any kind of credibility. They are renowned people. There are free like MIT edX. They offer free courses on this. So what is that additional that we are offering to them? One line on that page where we say that we have 5,000 members who are working in industry right now who are looking for people in this kind. This one line or this positioning of the diploma program will change the complete perspective of anybody who is trying to apply for a diploma program. So I think the third point is that we need to position of ourselves in a better way. We need to make things clear that, okay, are we going, are we the organization that is going to offer certificate programs? Are we going to offer online programs? Are we going to offer all of it? And then the, the first point that I was mentioning about the deliverables and the value addition, these will be framed again. So all these three points, when you combine them together, you come to a position where you can dictate terms instead of asking somebody or, you know, saying somebody, what can you offer me? So when we say, okay, we have one, two, three, four, five things to offer you then we can approach the international universities, Indian universities, other international organization, even the members. To engage the members also, these three points are key to, you know, to we have a member base, how we can engage those members. We have, uh, so uh, I like uh, the approach of Ms. Kuri, uh, Mr. Kuri and Daniel in this, because every time we have a discussion, there is an output. It's not like we get into a discussion and then there were some ideas that were discussed and then nothing happened. First time we met, we had a discussion. Okay, we want to do something. We did a program with the IST Navi, uh, Navi Mumbai inauguration chapter. Then we discussed something again. And uh, I, I remember that I visited him and met him again in Navi Mumbai where we were talking about doing something uh, again. But then I moved here, so that couldn't happen. But then again, we, we discussed this and this happened. So this part of 
members connecting with each other and executing this and then more documenting this. I think this will bring, uh, this will bring a lot of uh, scope for expanding the horizon. So just to like uh, the three things that I was mentioning, uh, first is building a strong uh, like deliverables and the values which ISTD can offer. This should be like concretely in black and white in pen and paper should be made. It should be there on our website, it should be there everywhere. Uh, the second point is building synergies within the chapters that we already have or building synergies between, between the members that we already have and of course, what uh, Dr. Vishwakarma mentioned about building a virtual chapter, of course, that will also go ahead with that. And uh, the third part is uh, deciding on the positioning of ISTD of what we actually want to be, what we want to be in five years. I think this, uh, this thing is like every interviewee prepares, what do you want to be in five years? Now I ask the ISTD fraternity, what do we want to be in five years? If we have an answer to this, then the expanding of horizon becomes just a journey and we know what the destination is. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chavla, uh, for putting your point in. And very well, you said the, the two points, uh, three points that you talked about in terms of the value, the second is the positioning, and the third is very clearly from the perspective of, uh, you know, uh, defining where, what is it that you want to achieve. Thank you very much. Well, we heard uh, all of you and, and, and some wonderful ideas. Uh, let me just, uh, and, and almost all of you in a single voice was talking about from the perspective of uh, creating a virtual chapter. Now, understandably, I think it is important for us to look at it from the perspective of what should be the scope of this kind of a virtual chapter if a, if a virtual international chapter is created. And what will be the scope of this? And uh, so, so that it just doesn't become yet another kind of a of a chapter that that is there, you know. Because we have had actually have had that kind of a history of of opening chapters, and then finally nothing is happening there, and then we have had to close down some of the chapters also, those chapters. So let's not get into some of those areas. That's one thing. So in terms of the scope, the second is. A lot of you have talked about it from the perspective of the certificate and the various kinds of options that are available to us today in the various areas itself, the certificate courses and the diploma course or for that matter, which are other kinds of courses. Right? We don't have to get confined only to our one main stable program that is the diploma in training and development, which is continued the way that it is. It is obviously we will have to revise that also in another way. But the certificate courses is what you are all talked about it and the opportunity to work with us. Now I must also put across over here that we are ISTD as a body is a member of an international federation. There's an at, at the global level, there's a body called IFTU, International Federation of Training and Development Organizations. In almost all countries, training organizations are members of IFTD. So from India, it is ISTD. This is from America, it is the American Sales Society for Training and Development. And similarly, there's a society that comes up from, let's say, UK, there's a society that comes up from, 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 you know, from Canada, there's a society that comes up from, from, from other places, etc. So there's a body which is there, and a pretty vibrant body that I'm aware of. And uh, as I said, that in the beginning. So, how do we leverage this kind of, uh, of a network? So, let me start by saying that we are talking about it, and we, we have a very limited time now. We are just about another about 30 minutes. Uh, so, we are talking about it from the perspective of one, the new areas of the skilling, the new areas where we can offer, and, and, and Samir was talking about it, you know, particularly uh, because. In Germany, uh, training is institutionalized, as I understand. And we're giving you that over there. And you should have talked about the new areas that are there. So what is it that that ICD should be doing to really be relevant in the international context when we talk about what the chapter is the scope and the range of programs and services that ICD can offer, which will make it unique, whether it is for Indian Indian diaspora, or it could be even let us say, you know, we can enter 
and you only got to do that in the diaspora also, because this is something which can really play a very important role. So let me start by, by first of all asking this question, and then we'll come back some more. Yeah, we will we'll take about no no more than two to three minutes each one of us, and that the other questions we don't have more. Yeah. Shall we? Yes, sir. So uh, I would say that uh, we should uh, say already this we have talked about uh, ISTD diploma uh, diploma program. But I think so. We are currently we are having only only one thing in our our, our kit. Yeah. So uh, what I would recommend that letter certificate programs also like one week program or two weeks program. Yeah. Say for example, I'm I'm conducting trainings on this uh, data visualization tools like Power BI Tableau. Now normally I I uh, say I cannot offer a certificate. Because I, I'm not a part of an institute, but if I'm if I'm getting that support from ISTD, then definitely we can also put it in on our uh, say website, and we can say that okay, so and so certificate course in Power BI or so and so certificate course in Big Data. Likewise, there are other areas, yeah. So uh, uh, and I I know about me also, but uh, but there are uh, 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 I would say many members who are. I would say having rich amount of experience and they can conduct these kind of programs. So let us also focus on these small, small programs also, certificate programs. And then maybe if we get a very good response, definitely I know that it, it, it will be well accepted. Then let us try to make something like a module also. Right? Okay, so let us then go for a six months module and then one year program. So I would say that, uh, Training and development definitely, definitely that is an important part. But along with that, now we have to also see that which are the topics which are now very much popular, yeah, and which are uh, so where we if we launch a program definitely will get the uh, the audience, yeah. So I would recommend that let us focus on this new area also, yeah. That is from my side. Uh, yeah, Suresh, Dr. Suresh, yeah, Suresh. Yes, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> you know, in my previous address, I had stressed on two points. Very first thing to involve our members who are currently based overseas and to gain their contribution to have their involvement <clears throat> in the activities which are currently being organized in India. And the second stage was, okay, go ahead and then collaborate with universities and others. So at this stage, even you know, <clears throat> after having an international chapter, the first thing definitely we will go get for sure that we will be able to have an additional contribution to the existing system. Currently, I did not see that any overseas member or any foreign participants was getting as much as involvement in the pre-corona situation. Hardly there was any situation. All the speakers, experts, presenters, everybody was from India. Then what is happening? If I have become life member of ISTD and for the last 20 years I'm working overseas, my friend, what exactly I'm gaining from ISTD? Apart from adding my name MISTD, what am I I'm gaining? No involvement at all. Only during last few months I have been starting, I, I'm starting getting emails, communication and I kudos being everybody in the thread. So very first thing, having this international chapter, we can first strengthen our national chapter, our national uh, infrastructure of ISTD. Today, I feel a sort of belongingness because you invited me. You invited Samir. All right, this is the first stage. Second, when you say about that, all right, uh, internationally, there is IIM within their country, they operate under IFTDO. I fully agree. I would like to mention here that Engineer Institution of Engineering and Technology UK, IET UK, that is the largest professional body within UK, but they do have their chapters in 167 countries and I am the IET representative for Western Canada. And I look after two Canadian states and two, uh, two Canadian provinces and two American states. Yes, there is a local professional body, sure. There is Engineers Canada, sure, but still, 
we are operating here as iit and not only that since there are not many members of iit so what we have done we have joined hands with five uk based institution that is collectively called chartered engineer specific and we represent five uk based engineering institution and i am the chair of that group for the last two years and we are as active as the local professional bodies here and we are joining and they are not our competitors and we don't treat them either but you know we are contributing to the profession before now at least we know likewise we have got our embassies in so many countries yeah. so what is the purpose right. the purpose is to extend the services to our members at the same time to join hand okay. to shake hand with the local authorities so things will happen and you know Uh, if in if knowledge sharing is going on that itself is an asset we are having professional activities that is an asset so and things will come sooner let us give a kick start and let us see if it doesn't work it doesn't work yeah. all right okay very good very good very good all right just uh, what what do you think should be the kind of new range of certain uh, courses that uh, that i think we can offer and uh, what kind of a value proposition i should you should have for uh, for when it brings goes to the international market uh, dr saxena could you please repeat i couldn't hear you sorry i said i said what kind of new range of certificate courses can it offer i'm aware of the fact that at uh, some time back we used to have a certificate course in project management which was done very very successful uh our our our, our, our one of our earlier presidents dr udesh poli Uh, had run those kind of programs, and, and, and a lot of people were there from the public sector undertaking them. And it was one of those very, very, very uh, uh, prized kind of a program. Uh, today, obviously, there are new range of programs that are there. There are courses in sorry, in the area of uh, emotional intelligence. There is a there is a course today in the area of uh, let's say. Uh, problem solving and the complex problem solving and the decision making. Are there problems that are there? There are the courses that are there in analytics, or for that matter, artificial intelligence, and other kind of areas that are there, which is the growing area. So, uh, what what are the kind of range of certificate courses that you think that I should should offer? What kind of a value proposition it should have when it goes to the international market to the Western side? um i think uh, what uh, what iscd can do at this point of time is uh, as i was mentioning we have a rich uh, me- members data we have rich members database and most of these uh, have some kind of specialized trainings so i think the first step is to understand what programs are uh, or what experts do we already have and what kind of programs would they want to propose so i think the first thing that we can do is we can invite proposals for what kind of programs that can be done like uh, dr ohadia was mentioning about uh, some of the programs that he can do like i can do about design thinking social media and, and so on and and i'm i know that i know so many members are uh, there who can offer different kind of programs like we have dr vishwakarma he is an expert with so much so many years of experience so he can also offer some kind of programs so not just uh, the uh, international ones but the also national ones and then what we can do is we can divide the programs in in uh, in two categories one are the courses or the c- certificates which are like the bases like if if we talk about design thinking design thinking is not going to uh, like maybe it will evolve but it will not totally change it's like basic mathematics you know so i think one should be the basic courses where uh, such courses uh, could be like uh, attended by anybody from any fields and the second could be uh, specific courses re- uh, regarding different fields and for the first i think uh, uh, we can go with the courses which are mentioned in some of the some of the uh, universities which are uh, in mit and other places where i can share the list of them uh, I-, i wouldn't want to name any specific courses because uh, we-, we can't just directly say that this this particular course is relevant that is why we need to create a range of it uh mm-hmm. the second kind of courses where we are talking about the specialized courses i we where once we decide that what kind of sectors we are going to address so then in that particular see if we ex- uh, sectors like in data analytics we have power bi and uh, uh, like some uh, data mining and these things which are very relevant at this point of time so uh to answer the question very specifically to two sectors one is where we are talking about the base courses mm-hmm. and then the second we are talking about the specialized courses 
and again i think it's not just about this. if we are going to create a certification program again the positioning is very important because anyone and everyone who registers shouldn't be able to get the certificate there should be a value of that certificate like yeah. if we are creating a course then there there should be certain number of contact hours there should be certain number of assignments and there should be certain number of like outcomes that should be designed so it should be properly designed and a person who's getting a certificate if that with that certificate if the person is going to anyone to ask for a job i am an expert in data analytics please give me a job i have this certificate of isd if he gets the job or she gets the job i think that's when we can consider that we are going to get a lot of such people who would want to join this certificate course wonderful 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 yeah and rather could you could you just very quickly in about a minute's time talk about it from the perspective of what kind of a value proposition i think you should have as it goes uh, to to the world uh, foreign markets uh as uh, yes rightly mentioned and uh, the other panelists mentioned i think it's really uh, necessary to identify what are the needs in identifying the pre and vanilla courses and then defining special topping programs which can be based on regions need or chapter needs uh, which can be identified based on the network that we have and i think that will help us and uh, also develop the skills of specific people so i think there are two elements that i would focus on one is definitely look at skill development of professionals and one is programs which are for organizations so that will help us distinguish creating certificate programs that grow across i study chapters and then there can be some programs which are again customized based on the needs of specific chapters all right wonderful anuradha can i can i just ask one question from all of you and very quickly i just want in about 10 seconds an answer from each one of you 10 seconds and after that because the president has come in and we we'll have to give the time to the president also to speak uh should i as cd where it goes to any of the foreign markets first reach out to indian diaspora or should we not reach out to the in or reach out to anybody who wants to become a member both anybody anybody so long as our constitution allows to have members with foreign nationalities what is the problem in having overseas member i don't see any reason why we no, should no, no, attend no, 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 no. this question as an entry strategy yeah as an entry strategy yeah indian diaspora you know is is one area that when you enter any kind of a foreign market any market yeah. for that matter yeah a a gift or let's say a foot in the door strategy is yeah. always to look at yeah those areas where you are known from yeah. where you start off yeah so the indian diaspora yeah and to the indian diaspora then the word spreads to the companies there okay yeah and also to let us say other so you bring in the other na other nationalities also yeah to the indian diaspora yeah yeah so do you think that should our reach be first to the indian diaspora or should it be saying that well we, we can we can reach out let us say to to a few of the active members we can do anybody more can we adopt the both strategies at the same time that we approach indian diaspora as, as well as we approach <coughs> others also at the same time because i think the both activities can go in parallel also all right wonderful wonderful thank you very much anuradha i think uh, there are two aspects that i consider one is uh, definitely the indian diaspora and also opening international memberships which will enable people who are interested but before we go there like yash mentioned clearly articulating our position and our offerings so that we can collaborate with organizations who are already available for example atd as you mentioned and different regions have training and development organization collaborating with them and spreading the word i think that's a better way to reach right. as right. again just positioning us as as i study itself all right okay i ask just and you a very simple question that for i start you with you i would know do you think that let's say uh doing business in india would it interest people outside india 
Yes. I, I was actually I, I was reading the comment and uh, one I think Miss uh, I think it's G V Swami one of the participants he yeah. asked what will interest and you asked the same question and it was going on in my head uh, as well right now I, I I think we should not approach the Indian diaspora there is a reason for it and I I don't know if you if you guys if everybody would see uh, you know look at me and say okay he's being uh, maybe i don't know the word of it but i think indians came out of india because they wanted to explore something which they did not find in india first point the second point is the what you asked about people who want to do businesses in india they would definitely be interested in what we have to offer because we have such a long uh, such wide diversity of what we can offer that is why if we have uh, say if we create a module by module i don't mean a course we create a module about consultancy projects that istd can take up we can offer uh, taxes we can offer we have chartered accountants i know i saw uh, mr salil chatterjee was here he was uh, the national treasurer when i was there so i know so, so we have people who can manage finances we have people who knows the engineering we have people who know uh, academics who better than dr sakthana yourself we have people who, who are working in uh, different kinds of industries and have years of experience with it. We have Dr. Natraj Ray. We have uh, consultants like uh, consulting organizations like the one in which Mr. Korean Daniel is. We have such a wide range of things that we can offer to the industries which are abroad. If ISTD sends out an email to each and every company in, uh, in most of like each and every company that wants to do uh, business in India, I think that would be the best way to kickstart ISTD abroad. Right. There is Good. no need to contact anybody uh, who's from India or anybody. Right. It's the companies. I think as an organization, ISTD can connect, and uh, it's the easiest way to get get through. They will definitely respond. All right. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, uh, yeah, I would like to say because as you raised this point of doing business in India, so I think so. Two months back, I had conducted one session. I was invited by one of the uh, German university, that is University of Bielefeld, and the professor he was knowing me very well that uh, I'm coming from India. So he uh, wanted his students to have this idea about how to do business in India. So, uh, uh, and when I conducted the session, the students were highly interested. And now this is about the students. Now the same thing we also expect from the German companies. Okay. So there is huge opportunity over here. And the another thing is that, that what you talked about that Indian diaspora, my uh, uh, experience says that uh, definitely Indian diaspora is a very, very good platform to uh, enter this area, uh, to enter the, the, uh, the, especially say, for example, German market, because definitely because I'm, I'm part of ISTD, I know what is ISTD. And, and when mm -hmm. I introduce that thing to the others, especially the German people, definitely I can convince them, I can tell them with passion. Okay. Now, if ISTD directly contacts a German person, from India that we are so and so thing, I think so it will take a lot of time. Right. So maybe uh, through the uh, this Indian diaspora, I, I feel that it, it, it is much more easier to uh, to enter this kind of market. This is my point of view. Thank you very much, uh, my, my fellow panelists. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you all for the last about uh, 90 minutes or so that we have been together. Uh, may I now invite uh, the President, uh, Dr. Natraj Ray, who's over here, and uh, for, for his kind of a perspective. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Dr. Ray. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, uh, sir, Dr. Saxena, sir, for inviting me. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, introduced ourselves for a long time. We have yeah. met somewhere at some time. Yeah. And my dear past president and all the president of emeritus, my dear chapter chairman, chapter secretary, and others who have participated in this. I cannot um, uh, tell everything because the spend time of, of the another five, six minutes I have. Mm -hmm. So I can tell a lot of things what ISTD has moved forward last uh, couple of years. So one uh, good thing I can tell you, sir, um, that ISTD is now uh, not Indian organization, not is a global organization. I can tell you many, many members last one year have done from Bangladesh and Bangladesh. Bangladesh is now part of the uh, uh, ISTD. So our past president, immediate past president, uh, uh, sir is there. He has a very good contact. I have a good contact. Last couple of years, uh, substantial members has been done. 
we have many members come from nepal bhutan and and south african south asian countries we have already started south asian uh, collaboration some other uh, some other countries and slowly we are going to global istd we have also start uh, uh, start gaining some of the members from the ghana and other and some of the members have inquired us from other countries like uk usa they are also be part of the istd within with, within a short span of time so the istd uh, earlier istd is the indian uh, society uh, for indian society for training and development now it is not indian i can tell you um, it is a global uh, society for the training and development i know uh, um, mr uh, joash chawla he was earlier in india so he has a um, lot of things done for the digitization of the istd thank you sir now istd um, uh, is going to the expand across the globe across the country, across the country our neighboring country sri lanka nepal bhutan south asian countries i have been some connection and some of members of some connection they are doing the istd in global and sir i can assure you within 3 to 4 years not only istd in india i can tell you and i can assure you that istd is a not indian istd it is a global istd and istd is the leading istd across the globe number 1 number 2 Now earlier ISTD is a very, uh, uh, very, uh, very conservative uh, manner we are working. Now it is a very democratic. You see that all NC meeting, 85, 86, 80%, 80, 85% NC members are attending the thing. And you see that the in this, in this, in this era, across the globe, across the globe, ISTD activities is going on. We are, we are the WhatsApp group. We across the globe, we have our, our. website has been moderated to go to the across the globe so i can tell you the in future within 2 to 3 years istd will be the global istd and we are also might know that istd if we are the member of iftido we are the member of artido and for showing that we are uh, we are we are expanding across the globe and this year uh, this year istd iftido conference in, in in india so we seek your support suraj ji Shomi ji, George ji, and other ma'am, Anuradha. So your duty is to bring the all foreign delegates to India to make to make the ISTD a successful, successful, um, successful one. So that the time is very limited. So that I can tell you and I can assure you that within two to three years, ISTD is the global. <laughs> ISTD is a global fora, and our members. are now connecting across the globe and i i thank that kurian daniel has arranging this then expanding uh, expanding the horizon of istd across the globe thank you kurian ji for your effort and thank, thank you thank you very much thank you very much this team this you uh, this team i am assuring you this team will bring the istd foreign members and all the foreign members will come to as on date istd delhi chap under delhi uh, on few years we will be going to more chapters across the globe we are shortly shortly inaugurate a chapter in bangladesh and nepal we are planning that we are some legalities we are, we are seeing the legalities as soon as legalities clearance is getting we are started our 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 chapter in in bangladesh and nepal i can lastly i can tell you i can tell you lastly that many istd diploma student are working across the globe last couple of days i have got a call from all arabian country that istd students are working there istd students are uh, istd student are placed there and they are successfully uh, work their training and development so arabian country also we are we are expanding our expanding our our branches there so, uh, two three days back i have got a call for bangladesh one fertilizer organization they need the seven Um, uh, diploma student for istd and we are already requested our diploma department to send the uh, send their details to the bangladesh so that istd is now global not in the istd in india and i assure you that within 3 4 years istd will be a global istd thank you very much over to kurian daniel thank you one and all special thanks to dr Raj rajan saxena for articulating the good uh, session and uh, thanks to all the panelists for keeping very good thought provoking uh, situation of course as you all suggested we will keep the ball rolling 
and as per the assurance of our national president we will see that within 3 4 years we will be a really a global institution of course as he has requested we need all your supports to all your whatever personal media is there your linkedin contacts your other contacts you can develop and you can ask them to contact us so that we will keep on vibrating the uh, the registrations as well as the collection of all the records. So once again, I thank you all and all the attendees for devoting time and a special thanks to our uh, Gurvinder for our technical support. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Oscar. Namaskar, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, the, you. thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Elaja. Thank you very much for attending the thing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Shailja, also. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Shailja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.